guys, welcome. This is your July 2024 Love Tarot Energy Update. Good for all signs, for the collective. Um, so we're going to look at the astrology for the month of July. Then I'll do a, um, a tarot reading where I go week by week. Um, so let's kick it off with a card from Fortune Oracle. See the message coming through for those of you watching this month. What is the message for July? But of course, card 24, patience. Slow down, change your attitude, and clear your mind. Um, July is a good month for that. We have a lot of energetic sh energy shifts. So I'm going to go through that now. So having patience um, is a really good message. There are a few collective bumps in the road this July and some notable shifts. So first, all the personal planets will change signs again. Mercury starts his next retrograde cycle. And we experience the second of two full, uh, full moons in Capricorn. So first, today, as I record this, on July 2nd, Mercury is moving into the sign of Leo. Uh, Mercury and Leo offers us some confidence in our communication. Mercury rules communication. So we're a little more confident, maybe a little bit more creative. Um, then we have on the 5th, uh, but at 7 p.m. Eastern, so it could be the 6th for some of you, the new moon in Cancer. And that's a, where we're going to set intentions all around self-care, nurturance, preparation, like what we're getting ready for, and the rest that's needed in that home consciousness. Um, so we might be more powerful in the outside world. So it's a new moon where you want to set some internal intentions, right? Intentions about what you need to give yourself, what you need to nurture yourself. So it's not as externally focused, um, but it will prepare you, part of the key word there, for the following, right? For the full moon in Capricorn and then the following new moon um, as things, you know, begin to externalize again. Venus is going to move into Leo on July 11th. Um, she's happy there. That's where the love language is affection and generosity. Um, and we kind of feel a little more bold in our relationship experiences and with Mercury in the mix, you know, head and heart aligned. Um, it feels good. Now on the 17th, Mercury begins his pre-shadow, right? A shadow where he is, you know, eventually going to move back to 22 degrees of Leo. That's where his pre-shadow starts. So when he hits 22 degrees of Leo, he's still moving forward. But that two-week period up until August 5th is what you need to pay attention to. Because what comes up in that period is what he goes back over and then turns around again and goes over it for a third pass. I call it the three act play, but it's the first act that's the most important, right? Because it gives us all the fruitful information that we want to pay attention to so that we can navigate a retrograde comfortably, okay? So things that come up, as I said, will feature more prominently in the month of August. I'm getting my notes mixed up here. Then we have Mars changing signs on the 20th into the sign of Gemini. Um, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so that Mars in a sign ruled by Mercury is creating a direct link between thought and action. Mer uh, Mars is the planet of embodied action, Mercury is our thought. Um, and since Mars sort of rules decision-making processes, we could kind of come up with the, yeah, I don't know, A or B, right? Because Gemini is um, the duality. It's the both and, A, B. Um, so we might find ourselves in a little bit of um, analysis paralysis. So keep that in mind. That's toward the third and fourth week of the month. We have the full moon in Capricorn, the second of two, um, on the 21st, offering that double opportunity to focus on care of self and to release anything that holds us back from a more powerful outward expression. That's why the new moon in Cancer is so important to do your inner work and get yourself ready, rested, recharged, renewed for the second 
Capricorn full moon where we finally blast through and get anything out of the way as we move back into our outward expression. So, um, yeah, for it's not just about our outward expression verbally in relationship, etc., but also goals, projects, responsibilities. So this month feels to me a little bit more like cocooning and sort of getting ourselves ready for what for the breakthrough that we want to see happen going forward. Um, then we have the Leo Mansion begins on the 22nd. Yay! Um, and so leadership, creative expression, understanding ourselves as the center of all we create will be the theme. <laughs> <laughs> of course, ruled by the sun, so it will be our time to shine brightly. And those of you with pl planets and placements in Leo are already probably feeling that pull, right? That's why it's so important to take this month or the majority of it to sort of brace yourself for that. Let's see what else I've got. Um, so Mercury in Leo is today, July 2nd. New moon in Cancer on the 5th slash 6th. Venus in Leo on July 11th. Mercury retrograde shadow begins on the 17th. He turns around retrograde on August 5th. Mars in Gemini on July 20th, full moon in Capricorn on the 21st. We hit the Leo mansion running on July 22nd. And then Mercury will, while he's in retrograde, he kind of, first he crosses over into Virgo on the 26th of July. And then on the 8th of August in the sign of Virgo will go retrograde back into Leo. So keep that in mind. Those are my notes. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, let's jump in to our reading. We're taking it week by week. I'll give you the overall. I'll give you some clarifiers. I'm not clarifying everything. Just what piques my curiosity, what I need to know more about. Here we go. Ah, so beautiful. Empress. So it's a divine femininely led month. Not surprised at all with Venus and Leo. Okay, so this top row is um, your divine counterpart. The center row is your energy. Woo, my, okay. Um, let me move this up a little bit. And this third row is your connection. And then we're going week by week, one, two, three, four. So we're kind of seeing divine feminine energy in the lead. It is about your openness, your receptivity, your capacity for love. It is Venus. So it is about Venus and Leo, um, right? The bold, grand gestures. Um, some over the top stuff could be on the menu. In week one, your person with the world here, um, it is, you know, about a cycle that might be closing out for this person week two hermit energy where they sort of go within to get some clarity week three, aha, Eureka and epiphany. And then week four, the choice around this connection for you <laughs> week one. Gemini here all about the let me let me make you understand let me make myself clear let me clear up any misunderstandings week two there might be something that you aren't really ready to face or deal with um, or some themes around something that feels avoidant in nature might be on display but week three we're looking at the future we're thinking about the path forward and week four, beautiful energy of the Knight of Cups, either giving and or receiving of love. Something from the heart, real lots of vulnerability here. For the connection, it's about the connection. Where is it headed? Week two, I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. I'm feeling stuck, overthinking, second guessing. This is the two of you together. But week three, it is the awareness that we're meant to be together. There's something really beautiful here. And in week four, the realization that things from the past kind of aren't helping, aren't serving us. The five of cups talks about mistakes of the past, regrets of the past, 
a sense of something that slipped through our fingers, something we've lost. But if you look at the card, there's this focus on what's knocked over, right? What, what did we spoil here? But if you look behind the figure, there is the two of cups. It's still available to you. So it'll be really important this, in this connection if you're going to kind of run through the game tape at all, that you do it briefly, that you say, what can we learn from this? Because we came through it together, intact. Um, so only using this five of cups as like a touch point, like, okay, we went through that, that mistake was made, now it's time to rally and move forward. So that's what I'm seeing, but that's how you move into... August and Leo season right around here we have this beautiful ace of cups and then we have to kind of look back at where did we make some mistakes along the way so that we don't repeat those mistakes then the world card talks about cycles um, so that's an important consideration here we go I do want to look for your person at the world to the hermit Queen of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. Hmm. I, I feel like this person, week one to week two, will be proceeding with some caution. They may make themselves a little unavailable or unapproachable. They kind of know you have some unanswered questions and while this is someone that has a great deal of respect for you, there's a part of what they're learning here um, that they kind of have to do on their own. So if you find that this is somebody between week one and week two of the month of July, kind of pulls back, goes a little MIA, um, take it as, uh, you know, don't take it too much to heart. Give them the space because it's a, um a phase of like personal growth self-exploration they're shifting through from one cycle to another but then they're seeing something really clearly and we have the lovers after that week three to week four oh my goodness I almost feel like this person um, gets a real wake-up call here on how their decisions may have impacted you, both of you, caused some heartache, some pain. So, two of swords. It's like, yeah, the choice is upon me. It's a crossroads moment. There's a getting clear here. All the swords energy, page of swords underneath. Um, and the page of swords underneath just... Um, suggests to me that this person will have an open mind, will be curious about, you know, how could I not see this before? I have a choice to make and the choice is mine. With regard to the connection, almost as if the Three of Swords becomes like, uh, becomes apparent to them that it, it wasn't necessary. There was just some information that they weren't picking or some insight that they weren't gaining or they weren't understanding as they were shifting from one cycle to another, but it becomes clear that they have a choice to make. So I think by the time we wrap up the month of July, this person will be in a different frame of mind. Now for you, I see this Knight of Swords, I get it. Um, there's something important you wanna say, but then I see this Seven of Swords to the Ten of Pentacles, and that's what I wanna explore for you. So if the Knight of Swords is that moment in week one to week two where you're like, I need to understand this. <laughs> let's clear the air. Let's make sure what's happening here. Um, I do feel week two to week three is where it's all about the mixed messages, leaving you with some feelings, uh, you know, feeling sort of devalued on some level, unappreciated, 
um, maybe abandoned even to some degree since we have some hermit energy on their part. This is your um, king of pentacles. You're thinking about the future here on an internal level at least, but there's something that is coming through in week two to three that you're not trusting this person's intentions because you're getting mixed messages and it's leaving you feeling really kind of out in the cold. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that their intentions are harmful, but if you're not feeling able to access them, right, because they're in hermit mode, you may interpret it in some kind of very negative way, which makes sense, but what you're seeing here is that this person is sort of gonna move very slowly and cautiously. Now, I wanna see your 10 of pentacles to the knight of cups, week three to week four. And interesting that you both have the lover's card. So there's some mirrored energy toward the end of the month about this sacred connection. Um, yeah, and it is, a, it is a card of choice, right? And I am going to see you there, two of pentacles. Like, all right, what am I really dealing with? Is this person invested? Are we both invested 100, 100? Is this something that could go the distance? Am I dealing with somebody who, you know, is capable of emotional vulnerability and availability? I do feel you'll be kind of up in the air about it, but you'll be recognizing um, that it isn't what you thought it was in week two to three. So when you start to go off the rails, come back to this reading, please. And, you know, like take a, a little temperature check on whether or not, you know, are you going to um, catastrophic thoughts in your mind because there are going to be shifts of all the personal planets and things get foggy and fuzzy. Um, and, so, you know, well, not really even foggy and fuzzy. They get bumpy. <laughs> we have misfires and miscues. So what you will think might be avoidant or maybe something shady will turn out that it's just that this person is you know, kind of coming upon some important realizations and epiphanies. And then it will be up to you to decide if what they're showing you is something that you had in mind for the long haul. So let's go ahead and jump into the connection. Four of Wands, um, week one to week two, we start strong on all fronts and then in week two, things kind of go off the rails. And I don't mean like really off the rails. I just mean, you know, um, our, our vibes, our frequencies are off with our person. Oh my. It's all about forward progress and then, right, with the, with the chariot. And then there's this, I'm hitting a brick wall. I don't know what to do. My intuition is failing me. This is the connection. This is where you're both gonna be. Feel, things feel might feel stuck. They might feel like a little stagnant. There might not be too much back and forth. Um, and this person might feel stuck. They're gonna be in that Knight of Pentacles to Hermit energy, uh, which by the way is all Virgo. So Virgo is, as a general rule, and of course it's stereotypical, Virgo is very linear, right? They're linear thinking creatures. It's a linear thinking processing sign. So it might be that what you perceive as avoidant and that makes you second guess someone's intentions is that they just need to press pause so they can collect themselves, right? And then what happens is sometimes we overthink, we get we second guess, we have self-limiting beliefs and self-doubts, and then you come through it, and in week three, everything's coming up roses. Two aces, ace of swords, ace of cups, 10 of pentacles in the middle, we're feeling good. So let's look at the ace of cups to the five of cups in week three to four. Ah, perfect. So yeah, now that I'm seeing this, it's almost as if the past uh, will be cues for the path forward. And that Eight of Cups isn't always about walking away. The Eight of Cups is about what no longer serves me. 
what what have I already gained? What have we, because this is the connection, so let me reframe that. What have we already gained? What have we learned? How have we grown emotionally in this powerful connection? And now what's the path forward? Sometimes that Eight of Cups is the spiritual path forward. How do we get beyond the mistakes of the past? So it's feeling to me like the past comes in as a reference point, which I mentioned at the outset of the reading, um, you know, just like a touchstone, like, okay, let's, let's not go back to that. There are better choices to be made. So I feel like um, even though we'll be heading into the pre-shadow phase of Mercury retrograde, that happens um, <laughs> right here, right where all the trouble starts, week two to week three, July 17th. Okay, so now that you know that, you can see how it's aligning in the reading, that there's a little disconnect, there's a little hiccup, but we get back on track. So be paying attention from January 17th, I'm going to say it again, to August 8th, August 5th. That's the pre-shadow phase before Mercury turns around. So we start seeing the bumps. And that gives us a reference point to reflect back on so that we can like avoid disaster. That's the benefit of the three act play. So that's what I'm seeing here. I, I meant to pull some cards for our Empress. So let's give a little bit of attention to her. Perfect. <laughs> See, everything happens for a reason. Um, yeah, we got a little defensiveness here in July, but nothing we can't negotiate, compromise, right? Reconcile. There's a meeting in the middle. There's a little frustration. Maybe we're feeling a little self-protective. And then with the beautiful page of pinnacles underneath, it's like, well, we'll have a fresh start. Okay, uh, let's do that. Let's do that over. I'm sorry. Right? There's like a lot of beautiful energy here feels really normal and it absolutely feels like it flows with um, the month astrologically. Venus in Leo kind of goes, hey, wait a minute, what about me, right? Hello, am I chopped liver? And then the Six of Wands comes in and it is that beautiful moment when we meet in the middle and forge win-win outcomes. So I think July is um, an interesting month, the first half, feels exploratory, positive coming in and then exploratory. And then we hit that middle of the month and everything kind of you know, like you can hear the, the needle on the record, the scratch, right? But then we get back on track. So I'm seeing a very positive month. Um, and that's what I have for you here. But I'm going to also take it to the extended. And in the extended, I go through, I use basically this storyline and then I go through sign by sign. Okay, so every individual zodiac sign gets a card and all the cards get clarified and we look at a deeper dive for the month. So that's what I'm going to do. There is a link below for that. Um, and also note that I have a special offer um, for private readings because we are moving into the um, Lion's Gate portal soon, which begins mid-July, goes to mid-August, peaking on August 8th. So I'm creating a special, the link is below. It says Lion's Gate Special, and it's $88 off of my regular rate. So if you've been wanting a private reading, but it's been a little bit out of reach, this is your chance. If you've already had a private reading, this is a better rate than my VIP discount, so you may wanna consider it. Um, and it is my way of A, supporting you because it's a very, big energetic portal, especially for twin flames, soulmates alike. Um, and so that will be the focus. So I'm not reading about work or health or family. It's you and your beloved. Um, but it's also my thank you because June was a bumpy month and um, I put out the call to all individual signs and I saw an absolute shift. Thank you to those of you who have gone in and just you know, gone into each video and left me emoji bombs. I, I see you. I, I appreciate you. It has helped. It has absolutely moved the needle a little bit. So um, hopefully YouTube now knows I'm here. If um, you haven't been seeing my readings for a while, here's what you need to do. 
you need to log out of your YouTube account or delete your app on your phone. I don't know if you know you can do that. You can go in and delete the YouTube app on your phone. Then you can re-up, right? Go back into your app, um, your, um, what do you call it? Your app store, get it again. It just sort of refreshes the app. If you're doing it on a desktop, you'll just have to log back into your account. And then unclick your notification bell and re-click it. It's like a reboot. So this happens every once in a while. I've noticed a pattern that it happens in the summer. I have also been sharing with you that platform, you know, the algorithms have been reprioritized toward new channels and shorts. So there are a lot of us here that are kind of getting <laughs> like snuffed out, which I don't really appreciate, but it's a thing that we, you know, you, you, you learn the game, you play the game. So if you have been missing me, that's my advice with your device and with your app. Shut it down, bring it back up, re like unsubscribe, resubscribe, unnotify, renotify, and reset, reboot your, your account, okay? That's my ask because it has made a world of difference for those of you who have picked up on that and have come into the comments and have let me know, yep, wasn't seeing you, now I am. So thanks so much for all of your support. I have no words. The link to the Lionsgate private reading special is below. And um, by the way, those will be delivered mostly in the month, like the second half of July through August. So just in case you were wondering, that's what I have for you. Um, let me go ahead real quick and give you the astrology that showed up for those of you that love that. The Empress is Venus, right? Taurus and Libra. Uh, we have the Page of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The world is Saturn, Aquarius and Capricorn. Um, Queen of Swords is Libra, Nine of Pentacles is some Virgo, Virgo in the Knight of Pentacles, Virgo in the Hermit. Are we feeling a theme here? And by the way, Mercury will be moving into Virgo, so it makes sense. I'm feeling that um, Cancerian new moon preparation with this person. They may not even know it, though. Uh, Page of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini in the Lovers, Whew, Gemini in the Knight of Swords. Um, King of Pentacles is Taurus, the lovers a second time, more Gemini, Knight of Cups is Pisces, Cancerian energy here in the chariot, the high priestess is the moon, um, the hanged man is Neptune, which rules Pisces. Yeah, that's what I've got for you. And as you know, patience, slow down, change your attitude, clear your mind, because we got a couple hiccups in the month nothing we can't make make it through and we come out on the other side better for the lessons of the past the link to the extended is below it's good for all signs i'll see you there in a second bye for now